over the course of the last couple of years, I have got a ton of questions about this Colorado XT pontoon. I hope the tutorials that I've done for you in the past have been really helpful. If this is your first time seeing this video because you have questions about how to properly inflate your Colorado XT pontoon, then be sure to check out my channel. I got a lot of different hacks and, and little projects you can do to this thing to customize it into the perfect fishing vessel. But for now, for right now, the video that I'm doing today is about properly inflating this thing. If you have been out fishing and you went and you bought this huge battery so that you could go all day and then you sit down in your pontoon and you start sinking backwards and your butt ends up looking like this and you can't figure out what's going on, you got potentially two different problems and this is what they could be. If you're sagging way far back in your pontoon, one of the potential problems, and believe it or not, it's probably the least common of all problems, is that your seat in and of itself is adjusted way too far back. You see, what this thing can do is this seat, is this seat is on rails. If you see that right there, I think you can see here, it can be adjusted backwards or forwards and if you can see that mine is adjusted pretty far forwards over half way but like i said that is the most uncommon problem with these things if you find yourself sagging in the back the most common problem by far is that you've just under inflated your pontoon we are so used to when it comes to inflatable devices, uh, not wanting to over inflate them for fear that they're gonna burst like a, like an air mattress or something that you're gonna sleep on for camping. But these things need that pressure in order to function appropriately. This pontoon right here, and if you're watching this, you probably have one too, that Colorado XT pontoon takes 2.5 PSI. Now that doesn't sound like much, especially relative to like a car tire or a bike tire or something like that. But in something like this, that feels like a lot. It feels like you're actually approaching burst level with these things, but I promise you're not. How do you know if you've gotten inflated enough or you're actually inflating it way too much? Well, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna look at a couple different types of pumps and perhaps that'll, that's a good, that's actually a really good question to answer, right? What type of pump should you be getting to inflate your Colorado XT pontoon? So here are the three types of pumps that you might be looking at choosing from. The first pump that you might be looking at is this one. It's a double action quick pump on the top. There is whoops, inflate and a deflate option on these pumps. As you can see, this pump is very old, but it has lasted a very long time. The maximum bar pressure on here is 0.17. So this has the ability to get it up to that inflated pressure, though you might have a heart attack and die before you get there. Another type of pump that is right here, or here, right here, is this type of pump. Many of you are familiar with this type of pump. Maybe you've got it to inflate your uh, air mattress uh, when you were camping. That particular pump will not even get close to the pressure that you need for this thing. So if, if that's the boat you're in and you're trying to use that same type of electric pump and you're sagging and you're trying to figure out why, that's why. It's because you're using a pump that can't even get close to the PSI requirements for this pontoon. A third option. Now, I don't even know where you can get this pump, but it's this baby right here. It doesn't even have a brand because it came with that thing right there. And that is one of those, uh, those stand-up paddle boards. We just happened to borrow this thing from a friend and it just so happens to have this tip that you need in order to plug it right into the pontoon, just like that. And this thing also has, when you plug it in, the ability to select the PSI that you need in order for it to be right on. So what we're gonna do now is because this thing is programmable and we're gonna be able to put 15 PSI, that's what it, or no, <laughs> 2.5 PSI, 15 PSI is that thing. We're gonna be able to program two and a half PSI into this pump and have it inflate this pontoon all the way. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to be creative and play around this thing and see if I can't come up with some way 
of testing the pressure without going and having to buy a pressure gauge for this thing, because that's important to know, they do make pressure gauges for these things to make sure that you're able to get it to the PSI that you need. So I'm gonna, I gotta bring my rig around here so I can plug it in. This thing plugs into a cigarette lighter. So I'm gonna bring my rig around here, plug this thing up, program it to two and a half PSI, and then we're gonna see how tight this thing really is when it's inflated to the proper pressure. So let's do it. Hey puppy, what are you doing puppy? You wanna tell everybody hello? Rooster, sit, sit. Do you wanna say hello? Do you wanna say hello? Rooster says hello. Ah, there we go. So this fancy, fancy pump has this programmable PSI. We're gonna hit that, and then we are going to hit the subtract button until we get to two and a half PSI. Holy cow, come on, it goes in half, so that's good. All right, two and a half PSI. Oh yeah, that's tight. Okay, as you can see right here, this is not, that's not an inflated uh, pontoon. So we're just gonna double check this pressure again. We got two and a half and we're just gonna hit the power button and let's watch it work. All right, there we go, two and a half PSI. We're gonna unplug this and we are, Oh, ugh. and we're gonna get good to go. I'm gonna put our cap on just like that. And now it's inflated. I, uh, oh yeah. Let's go ahead, um, let's go ahead and do that other side. And then we'll kind of fumble around with this thing and see if we can't find some way without a gauge to be able to tell if we're close to the proper inflated temperature. Inflated temperature. Mm, pressure. <laughs> Okay, there we are. We're at the recommended two and a half PSI for both of these sides right here. What you're gonna notice right away is that there is zero wrinkles in this thing. And so you won't have any, you won't have any sagging whatsoever. And this thing is really on there. And I want you to listen to the sound. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but what I do when I'm on the, where I'm on the river or on the lake about ready to launch this thing and I'm inflating it, I'm not using this fancy pump because I don't own that pump. I use that double action pump. But what I do is I hold the nose and I try to bend it. Holy cow. See, already this is more inflated than I ever do uh, with that double action pump because I fall victim to what I just told you guys is that I'm worried that I'm gonna overinflate it. But I see now that I wasn't even close to overinflating it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set up this camera and we're gonna play around with the front because I feel that that might be the most helpful to you uh, to to judge what PSI you might be at or if you're close to the inflated pressure. Okay, one thing that I would do when I would assemble this to make sure the pontoons were equal pressure is I would take the nose and I would squish it like that. And then I'd come over to the other nose and I'd squish it. And I would, just to see if they felt kinda, kinda similar. And uh, in this one, you know, it feels similar. That, that was actually a pretty effective strategy for me. But as we're, as we're messing with this thing and it is so much more taut than it was even when I inflated it a lot, is if you, let's do this. If you were to take these and try to pull them towards one another, look at that, as hard as I can go, and I'm only bending it that much. And look how hard it's, how fast it's popping out like that. So let's just do that. Let's call that a solution. Let's call that something that you can do and something that I can do next time I, I inflate this thing to take it fishing. As you can see, it's it's been a while, is, uh, grabbing these, these D-rings right here on the front of the pontoon and uh, pulling them towards one another and to see how much give that is. 
Now we all are of different varying strengths. Uh, and as you can tell, I'm super buff and athletic and in shape, but I'm gonna take these things, I'm gonna pull them towards one another. And I'm pulling pretty tight. I mean, look at that, look how much that. Let's do it again from a different perspective. We're gonna take them, we're gonna pull them real tight. And just, you see where it's bending? Right here towards the tip. It's like an inch and a half from the D-ring is, is where it's bending. See that? It's bending right there. It's not bending up here. If this was under inflated, the whole thing would just curl in, but it would definitely do it up here. Uh, but if I pull really hard to the point where I'm moving it, it starts right here. And then it's gonna uh, go up like that just a little bit. So look at that. Now on top of being able to give it the, the bend test here at the nose, another thing you can think about is taking a look at this uh, cross member, pontoon support, whatever you want to call it, and that I cannot get my, in fact, that hurts. I can't get my finger under that. I can't even get a piece of paper in there because it is that tight. So maybe pushing down along here and seeing if there is any way that you could see daylight in there. And if you can, you need to pump it up just a little bit more. Folks, if you have any ideas and maybe other pump options that I don't know about, which I can already think of a couple pumps that are available that I just didn't talk about, be sure to, to drop that down in the comments. Ideally, this is a, this is a community video for all of us that are really uh, into using these things for, for fishing. Uh, and so you're just gonna you're just gonna help the other people out that are also watching this video. Uh, if you found value in this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, be sure also if you haven't seen all the other videos that I've done for mods and, and things like that on a pontoon, uh, check those out as well. So have a good one. See ya.